Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about treating and diagnosing and treating anterior open bites in adults. And I just did a video a few minutes ago on kids, so if you have a kid, um, go ahead and look at that video first. If you have an adult, you can look at this video. By adults, I'm meaning anyone that's no longer growing, so it does not mean age 18. It could mean as young as age 8 or 9 in girls, or um, as young as 11, 12, 13 in boys. So unless you know their skeletal age and you've done either done some type of hand wrist evaluation or you've received growth charts from the pediatrician, you don't know if this is a preteen or a teenager. So do that first. And I have tons of videos on how to do that. Please view the kids version that I just posted for more information. We're going to assume that your patient is no longer growing, is an adult, presents with an anterior open bite and what to do. So I see these all the time in my private coaching practice with um, my VIP and a la carte clients and concierge clients. And everyone's always excited to get started. And one of the biggest frustrations I get, you know, whether you submit to Invisalign or ClearCorrect is they'll make it look like it's easy and it's not. So it's not always predictable. Um, and it's not always easy and you could fix it and it might completely bounce back open when you stop treatment, take those attachments off and everything. So it is probably one of the biggest mistakes you can do when taking a case is one of these really tricky cases that looks easy but actually ends up being hard and I've seen doctors who have basically gotten in trouble by doing these, whether with insurance companies, things relapsing and the patient asking for their money back or with state dental boards because they didn't do what they needed to do in order to diagnose it. This is where there's a big difference between an orthodontist and a general dentist because we know better, right? So whenever I get any type of open bite, I'm going to do a lot, a lot of diagnostics and I'm going to ask a lot of questions and the answer might be no, we can't treat you without surgery. Um, I know it's not an answer that people want to hear, but if I don't think it can, I'm not going to try it, you know, because all it's going to do is cause more problems. So first thing we're going to do is we need to find out what caused that open bite. And I know that if you've worked with me and you've sent me one of these cases, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that Invisalign clinch check because we don't know what caused it. We need to fix that first before we can jump into aligners. So what, how do you know that? Well, first thing you're going to do, always, always, always get a SAF and SAF numbers. If you want to know more about that, you can go into my website. Excuse me, not my website. You can go into my YouTube site, which you're probably on right now, but you actually have to go into the Street Smile Solutions YouTube site, okay? Not just general YouTube. And within my YouTube site, Street Smile Solutions, there's a little magnifying glass towards the top, put in the keyword. Um, what are we talking about? SAF. And all the information about Ceph, matter of fact, I think Ceph's are their own playlist. Tons of information about Ceph's. Once you get your Ceph, then you're going to need to get um, numbers for the Ceph. That's really easy. There's a variety of different labs that will turn these around in less than a day. Um, once you get the numbers, if you have no idea what it means, this is where you can work with us. And we'll be glad to explain it to you and help to create a good treatment plan once we see those numbers. All right. So that's the first thing. What else? Um, we also need to do an adult um, sleep questionnaire and ask a lot of questions. You know, when, when do you first remember getting this? A lot of people say I've always had it. Um, have you ever had ortho before? It's a really good question. Um, yes, no. If they have, my question is, was it corrected during ortho? Usually the answer is yes. Did it relapse? Yes. A lot of times they had retainers still. Still relapsed with the retainers. Totally normal. Again, they did not find the source of it and they didn't treat the source first or concurrently, and that's why it relapsed. Another thing you want to look at is the Mullen potty scoring, seeing if there's either any oral or oral pharyngeal um, airway issues, nasal airway issues. If you've got airway issues, they need to go to the ENT first, and sometimes they're going to need a surgery. Sometimes the ENT is going to give you a release so you can go ahead and start the ortho. Um, they may even need to go get a complete sleep evaluation in a sleep lab. This is where if you're not off, you know, already working with a sleep physician, um, you either might want to start or you want to work with a dentist who's not going to poach your patient. Perhaps there's a dentist who's really into sleep, um, who doesn't do ortho um, and won't post your, poach your patient that you could refer to for that. I know this takes time. Everybody wants to start their ortho, but if we don't do things the right way, it's not going to fix. It's not going to be predictable and it's not going to, you know, stay fixed. So it's really important that we take our time. Um, again, looking for mouth signs of mouth breathing, both at night or during the day. You can ask a spouse to observe the patient multiple times during the night, not just one time, because things can change um, how they sleep. Um, that's why I really like to get that sleep evaluation if you can, because all of this goes hand in hand with sleep issues and OSA as well. And checking for tongue thrusts clinically, asking them to read a poem or read a section from a book, not telling them that you're looking for tongue thrusts 
tongue thrust, but looking for signs of tongue thrust. Obviously, that's an easy one. Um, so ultimately, once you get all the information, then we can go ahead and fix that. Sometimes it may mean putting in some type of fixed appliance first or doing some type of removable appliance therapy either during the aligners, um, some, some things you can wear over it at nighttime, or using maybe an oral myofascial malfunctional therapist concurrently. That's usually out of pocket. It's not usually covered by insurance with a variety of different exercises, as well as being very aggressive with your attention. Um, usually I recommend a three to three upper and lower bonded retainer as well as Essex or Vivera over that. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, moral of the story is don't rush into your anterior open bite cases or you might get burnt. All right. Thank you.